Hey folks, David Stewart here. Let's talk about collecting, um, which is a topic that's in one of these stories in Afterglow Generation Y. I put it out on the channel as a little audiobook called Mad Uncle Marty. What's the danger of collecting? What am I talking about when I talk about collecting? I mean collecting things to have collections. This is, a, this is distinct from having a lot of things that have a use. For instance, if you have a lot of tools, that's not a tool collection as much as it's a bunch of tools which you use, right? You wouldn't go to a carpenter shop or a blacksmith shop and be like, well, you have a great collection of tools here. They're, they're tools which you use. Now I say this as a musician in a slightly self-justifying sense because I have a lot of guitars, but the guitars, um, are tools and I've used them all. I've recorded on pretty much every instrument I own at some point. And um, I think there's almost, I, I can't think of a single instrument I haven't done some sort of recording with at some point in the past. So yeah, I have like a wall of guitars. You can't really see them from here. They're in like another room. I got a bunch of guitars up on the wall. Uh, is that a guitar collection? Sort of, but I don't have them just to put them on the wall to look at them and to have a collection. They are tools for my profession. Likewise, if somebody has a collection of guns, um, usually that's an assortment of guns, not a collection, because you're going to use those guns for something, right? You have a shotgun to hunt ducks and you know, you may have like a plinking 22 and you may have, um, you know, a gun for self-defense and you may have a pistol to, to carry and you might have, a, you know, a high powered rifle to hunt deer and you may have different varieties of those. And certainly growing up with my dad, who was a gunsmith and was big into um, building guns and having guns, you end up with many tools to do many jobs in an optimal way. Um, at a certain point, though, you can end up collecting. And collecting with something means you're really buying things to have them, not to use them. And collecting when it becomes kind of a clinical problem, like the story Mad Uncle Marty in, in this book, is when you're collecting to have the collection, not to have the individual things in the collection. So um, I think about this sometimes with toy collectors, right? So there's adults who collect toys. Maybe you're someone who collects toys as an adult. And I've known varieties of people who collect Star Wars toys. I've known people who collect Star Wars toys in what I would call like a, a clinically disordered fashion. They buy all Star Wars toys because they want to have all the Star Wars toys. They don't want there to be any Star Wars toys that they don't have. Then I know people who buy certain Star Wars toys basically just because they like, they like them. They like to look at them. They like to have them. And in some cases, there's like a little theme to, to the collection. They buy Star Wars cups and then they drink things out of the cups sometimes, right? But they have like a big display of all the different, you know, Stormtrooper cups or something like that. Or maybe they buy one variety of every Stormtrooper toy that's ever been put out. Maybe they're just into Stormtroopers or they buy just Darth Vader to have a bunch of Darth Vader toys. That's a little bit limited compared to the people who are like, I have to have everything. And um, this can be something that can really drain people's bank accounts. And I think toy manufacturers know it when you look at like the Black Series Star Wars toys and they're expensive and they're, they're good toys. But I think a good portion of the people buying them aren't really buying the action figure because they're a, a little boy who wants to play with Star Wars toys or a girl, uh, but rather because they have a collection and they buy it to go put it on the shelf, especially those like tall, remember the tall dolls? They have these like taller Star Wars dolls from like the prequels era. People buy them, put them on a little display, never take them out of the box. That's where they're most valuable. You see, it's kind of like the 40 year old virgin, like you have them up on the wall. And that's kind of what um, Uncle Marty is doing in this story is he has Funko Pops. Funko Pops, I have, now if you're a person who collects Funko Pops, if you're a person who collects Funko Pops, I'm really sorry that I'm about to probably offend you, but I really hate Funko Pop collecting. And the reason is because people, it's, a, it's an object with no use. It's an object that you can't even play with, right? Like the expensive Star Wars toys, you theoretically could take them out of the box and play with them. And in fact, I have characters that do that in this book. They take the Star Wars toys out of the box and give them to their kids and their kids play with them and enjoy them. 
and it brings them joy. And even it brings up Manacle Marty joy at the end of the story because he's kind of forgotten what collecting is and is just excited to have a Darth Vader toy. You know, he's just remembering that he wanted one as a kid and his mom wouldn't buy him Darth Vader toys. And that's a little bit autobiographical. My mom wouldn't buy me like the bad guy toys. I, maybe because she thought it would make me into a bad guy or something. I don't know. But, you know, I never got to have Darth Vader or anything like that. Whereas my son was super into Darth Vader when he was three or four. So I just bought him Darth Vader toys. Like, have fun with Darth Vader. He's a compelling character when you're four. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, you could theoretically play with Star Wars toys, but Funko Pops you can't play with. And it's pretty much impossible to collect all of them. But the people who collect them, the more they collect, the more they want to get to have the complete collection. And that's when you know that your collecting mind has kind of short-circuited. If you're like, I have to get this thing that I don't care anything about because it completes the collection. It's the one that's missing. You know, I need all of these, even though this one doesn't do anything, I'm going to get it because it's a complete collection right it, it completes the collection I, I see people who maybe buy like the weird little anime statues which is not something that i understand but they don't seem to buy so many of them that they are bankrupt and they don't seem to buy so many of them they need like a whole room to display their little statue collection or something they buy maybe a couple that they think are cool and then they leave them on the shelf and look at them and enjoy looking at them they're a curio right they're a tchotchke they're a bobble um and there's nothing wrong with having a couple bobbles like i got there's like some skulls and stuff back there, right? And we've got some baubles about, you know? I have them. Everybody's got us a couple objects that are just fun to look at. Um, but you're going to cross the line when it's like, I have to have the collection. And especially when you're not enjoying the collection. Maybe the collection's in a bunch of boxes, like with, with Uncle Marty. And not even being displayed because you just have to continually buy them and get more of them in order to have the complete collection. Like I remember back in the 90s, people would have these binders full of Magic the Gathering cards. They didn't even play the game at that point, but they would buy all the booster packs and trade around in order to get all the cards. And then at a certain point, it was like, well, I I just collect angels, right? So there's people who just collect angels. Then every new set, they're trying to buy all the angels. So they have every angel in the collection. Now that's a little bit more limited than trying to have everything in every set. But I still know people who would have a binder full of alpha cards. Like I have every alpha card in the set, including a Black Lotus. Now, why would you pay $1,500 for a Black Lotus? I don't even know how much they're worth now, but I remember being like, just like awestruck in the early 2000s that Black Lotuses were worth $1,500 and used to just like see them in packs in the 90s. Uh, but anyway, you know, I got to pay $1,500 to get that Alpha Black Lotus so that I have it because it's the only card I don't have in my collection is the Black Lotus. So if you're doing something like that, then chances are you've got that You've got that clinical problem with collecting. So how do you avoid, I don't know, how do you avoid having that clinical problem? So first one is what I mentioned is hemming in your collection. I wanna have a collection, keep it limited enough to where you can display it. Like a, a rule that some people have had is like, okay, if it doesn't fit on two shelves, it's too much. There's just too many of them if they don't fit on two shelves anymore. Or you have one bookcase full of your collection and that's as much. And if you wanna collect more, you gotta figure out how to pare it down. You gotta sell some stuff on eBay and figure out what's actually important for your collection. Like if you run out of storage space, then you definitely have too many of whatever that object happens to be. And I'm not saying this is some, some morally superior person. I tend to collect books. I tend to collect too many different objects. I, I just have an assortment of things um, that I don't want to get rid of. I get too attached to objects like a lot of people, but it's an important exercise. So I've mentioned this with books is that if I haven't read the book, if I read the book once and, and haven't read it in years, I'll, I'll probably just get rid of it. If I've read a book twice, I'll keep it because that means I'll probably want to read it again and enjoy it again. The worst thing that can happen if you get rid of a book, especially in like the 2020s here, is you have to order another copy of that book if you want to read it. It's not, it, chances are you're not getting rid of any super rare books that can't be acquired again. Um, you're probably going to be able to find the book again and probably not for, for not very much money, especially if it's a popular book. But it's okay to keep them around if you plan to read them fairly often read them a couple times yeah that's what a bookshelf is for is to have books on the shelf um so anyway i i have this as a caution because in this story man uncle marty we end up with a problem which is what do you do with these collections of tchotchkes when you get to be 80 90 years old in 2060 
What are we going to do with your collection in 2060, in 40 years? When you're too old to care for yourself and you have to go into a retirement home because no one's going to take you into their home because you don't have any kids, maybe, right? That's part of like Uncle Marty. It's like his nephews are trying to figure out what to do with him to try to take care of him because their father is elderly too. So what do you do when you're really elderly and you have to go into a retirement home? What's going to happen to that collection? Are they going to sell it on eBay? Well, are your Funko Pops going to be worth anything in 2060? I think there's a fair chance that they'll be worth nothing. If you've ever gone into junk shops, there's a lot of antique stores that are really just junk shops. They're full of old baubles from the 1930s. These are things that, you know, the older generation, maybe like the World War II generation and before, would collect little things, like maybe little porcelain dolls. And today, they end up really being worthless. They're, they're virtually worthless because there's so many of them and people don't really know what they are and they don't seem to have an immediate purpose, nor is there like a collector's market for a lot of them. So, you know, like the precious moments figurines that, you know, baby boomers and old people liked, what's going to happen to those? Well, I think a lot of them are just going to end up in a landfill because you won't know what else to do with them. And I think that's more likely than not going to be the case with Funko Pops. People that have put a lot of money into buying Funko Pops, eventually they're going to get tired of the collection and they'll get rid of it. And if they don't get rid of it before then, maybe they box it up and forget about it in the garage. I know I have a box of old magic cards, you know, and then um, what's going to happen to it after that? It's probably just going to get thrown away or recycled um, at the end of your life. What are you going to do with it? Same thing with other stuff, right? Like, you know, I have I have vintage video games. I have like a vintage video game collection um, or, you know, retro game collection. But what's going to happen when you are too old to play the video games? Are people going to want those or what's going to happen to them? Are people going to care about PS4 discs in 2060? Or are they going to be like, every game is available on the internet. Let's just recycle the plastic and get on with our lives. Um, I think I think we're going to have a... a, a an abundance of excess rubbish when my generation gets to be very old. And that's really what that story is in here. It's the only story that I really put deep into the future where it's like, here's where some of the people in Gen Y are headed with their nostalgia and their obsession with things. And also millennials. Um, millennials are like this a lot too. This is something that we have in common. You know, if you were born in the 90s or 80s, you probably have this in common where you collect too many things. Like you're too... You're too into the physical, you're too into buying physical garbage, you know, loot crate and plastic crap and little figurines and stuff and toys and pulling on this. I, I, I held on to all the toys from when I was a kid and I gave them to my kids to play with, um, not to just put them on a shelf and collect them. I want to, you know, it's important to take that step and be like, no, this is a thing which has a purpose. But yeah, I think that's going to be a problem with my generation. So anyway, check out that book, Afterglow, Generation Y. And if you've read it, you've probably already read it because I have a huge, I have almost all the stories up on YouTube. So um, if you want the book fully collected with some extra content, you can find it down below in paperback or e-book or ebook form. Have a great one. Uh, leave me your thoughts down below on collecting. And uh, I will see you guys next time.